Hey guys, what's up? Rebecca Overson here with The Art of Building a Successful Massage Practice. So excited to have our weekly live Q&A, as is our tradition. Gosh, I've been doing this for a couple of years now, you guys, and it's always a pleasure to gather around and put our heads together and solve some problems. So what this hour is all about is whatever you guys wanna talk about. It's free coaching, free help, uh, whatever you need, that's what we're here for. So um, as we get started here and as you're logging on and watching live, be sure and introduce yourself in the comments below. And as always, let me know where you're from and how many years you've been practicing so that everybody can get to know you. And especially if you're brand new in the group as well, or maybe it's your first time to live Q&A, let me know that as well, just so that we can, we can give you a proper welcome, okay? And if you are new to the group, you probably saw Robin Anderson's post. She's our um, one of our community moderators, and she always um, posts a welcome and, and includes in that post so many really great resources. In fact, some of you that have been in this group for a while might want to go check out that post. It's really, it's, uh, it's like pinned to the top of the group. Um, and there's, uh, we've just been regularly putting some good resources in there for you so that you can know all of the free help that I offer to everybody in this group, you know, just kind of on demand. Okay. So I want to make sure you guys all know about that. And again, as you're lo logging on, say hi, let me know where you're uh, from and how many years you've been in practice. And then also let me know what you're celebrating this week. You know, what victories, what successes, what accomplishments do you have? What's going well for you? I always like to start out there before we dive into problem solving and troubleshooting and things like that. Okay. So, um, I want to talk today just, just to kind of get the conversation going. I want to, um, well, and here's the other thing, actually, let me back up. You guys tell me, what do you need today? What are you here for? What do you need out of this conversation? We got 60 minutes together. That's it. It's not a lot of time. So I want you to think about, you know, what do you need? And these are always, these are problems that I can solve. You guys have been a massage therapist for 24 years. I sold my practice. I now mentor massage therapists to build thriving private practices of their own. And in fact, if I can just brag for a little bit, I'm going to, all right. Let me just tell you, and then I'm going to get to what I wanted to talk about. Uh, so one of my graduates just posted something, and um, I don't know if you guys saw it in the group, but I just wanted to share with you because it's so freaking inspiring. It's so great. All right, so let's see here. Um, she did the program about, she worked with me for my eight-week mentoring program about, I want to say a year ago or more. And, sorry, I'm trying to find, okay, here we go. Um, and she had just gotten her practice off the ground. So um, so this is really cool. She posted this three days ago. She says, OMG, you guys, 18 months ago, July 2017, I started my practice with zero clients. I started Rebecca's program in August of 2017. So she'd been in, uh, she'd been, you know, a month into this and realized she was, you know, on a, on a boat without a paddle, okay? How many of you guys feel like that, right? She said, I graduated October 2017. My first month, my gross revenue was $1,600, which by the way, I wanna point out, for a first month in practice, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. You know, that's like, wow, that's something, that's not nothing, all right? So she says, my first month, my gross revenue was $1,600. In January, January 1st, this year, uh, my gross revenue so far is $9,600. She's like, WTF? <laughs> she says, I work Monday to Thursday and only two evenings. Thank you, Rebecca, and all of you graduates. I literally could not have done this without each of you. So think about that. Okay, there's somebody who added $9,000, $8,000 a month to her revenue. That's a lot of money. That's $72,000 more a year than she was you know, making at the beginning. And that's, those are pretty great numbers for a solo practice. By the way, I asked her, I said, is this including gift certificates or retail? She said, no, it is just her hands on sessions. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's pretty awesome. You know, out there in the world of service providers and he helpers and therapists, like psychotherapists and things like that, they say it takes three to five years to build a practice. And I love seeing, you know, a thousand percent growth in a, what, 18 month period. It's pretty extraordinary. So celebrating one of our Canadian registered massage therapists who is totally kicking ass, you know, doing what she loves, making a difference, and making a great living doing it. That's what I want for you guys, okay? Do you know massage therapists are in danger? Do you know our industry is pretty bad? 
If you look at the numbers, you know who's making the most money in this industry? The massage therapy schools. Um, and therapists graduate and then they have no knowledge of what to do to make their skills actually make a living for them. And uh, just aren't, you know, it's not business school, it's massage school, right? In fact, I have a lot of students that have business degrees and they say it does not help them. It doesn't help them when it comes to building their own practice. So um, I just love it. So super exciting, celebrating, woohoo, pretty awesome. I mean, who wants to, who else wants to make $9,600 a month after 18 months of being in business? Anyone? Let me know <laughs> and I'll give you the link. I've got a few spaces open in my program this week. If anybody wants to jump on a call and uh, get your application in and really look with me and see if it's a good fit, I wholeheartedly invite you to do that. Okay, I set aside a certain number of hours every week just to talk to you guys that are serious about making mega changes and really going in the direction of what you want to do. Okay, look, you guys, look, building a practice, I've said this a lot, it's one of my favorite metaphors because it works. It's like a four number combination lock. In fact, I need to just get one of those so I can have it handy and show you. But you know what I mean, the tumbler ones, and you have to get those four numbers right in order to open the lock. So some of you are struggling because you have three out of the four numbers in. And the fourth number, the thing that you're looking for, it's not the thing that you need. Have you considered that like what might actually be in the way of your success is a hidden mindset self-sabotage? And if it's hidden, how can you know what it is? If it's hidden, how can you fix it? You know what I mean, right? So it's, it's tricky, it's really tricky, but that's my job and that's what I love to do is help you guys solve those problems so that you can truly thrive and have what you need. Okay. All right. So let's see. Hi, Marie's here. Hi, happy. I love your little giffy. It's so cute. Hi, Sarah. I got off work early. Yay. Perfect. Great to see you. Hi, Carrie. Great to see you as always. Brenda's here. Sarah's here. Jessica's here. Jessica, I was just about to dive into your question. So let's talk about this. Hi. All right, you guys. And then also, um, you know, whatever you need. Okay. So I introduce yourselves. Say hi, where you practice, how long you've been in practice, and then uh, something awesome that's happened for you this week, and um, and then you know what do you need out of this time together? What do you want to get out of this out of our time together so that I can um, so that I can support you in reaching those goals? Okay, cool. So all that being said, we're gonna jump in. Jessica sent me a question, which I think is really really good. All right. And Jessica, if you want to jump on camera with me, let me know. We can actually talk this out. No, no pressure. Maybe you're not ready for that. I don't want to do that. But, um, but Jessica um, uh, shot out a question to me that I think is a really, really good thing. We got it solved. Look at the split. But, but uh, it's a couple of things that I want to share with you guys about about handling your clients and appointments and things like that. Okay. So Jessica says, I didn't realize. Um, and then she says, I fixed it, that my schedule, uh, scheduler allowed clients to schedule a day ahead instead of two days out. Okay, so this is Jessica has decided she doesn't want people, you know, booking within a certain window. Okay, so I have a lady that requested an appointment for 3.15 tomorrow. I called her at 11.27 a.m. this morning when I looked at my emails. I left a message stating I wanted to confirm your appointment for tomorrow, so please call me back. Never heard from her. Then emailed her at 3.15 asking for her to call me because I needed additional information to confirm her requested appointment for tomorrow. It's an hour past that now and I haven't heard from her. What do I do? Okay, so here's a couple of things that I wanna give, a couple of tips I wanna give you guys when it comes to online scheduling. Because Jessica, you know, had you know different questions she was asking what do I do do I leave it and just hope up that this lady shows up tomorrow do I call again do I what do, do I cancel it what do I do okay so here's the thing you guys want to remember you want to think about when you're booking these appointments especially if your online scheduling system allows people to request appointments without actually booking them you've got to make sure that's clear to the client you can't expect look Rule number one, never expect your clients to care about your systems, processes, and policies. They don't care. They're not going to remember them. It's your job to support them through that process so that they arrive, that the appointment is booked, it's like solid. And by the way, Jessica um, and I have worked together, so she knows, you know, there's this whole 
body of knowledge that I give my students about what it really means to book an appointment with integrity and why that matters. You know, why you should care about that instead of just, you know, saying, oh, sure, new client, four o'clock tomorrow, sounds good. Like, there's a whole psychology behind this. And those therapists that really get this right succeed. And those that are um, resistant to it or uh, um, oblivious to it will struggle and not know why. All right, so here's the thing, right? Um, if the client doesn't know that they that this is a, an appointment request versus a booked appointment, that's gonna create some confusion. Cause they're gonna feel like, oh, I, I, I've got an appointment tomorrow at 3.15, what's the big deal, okay? Uh, so that's one thing, make sure that that's clear, those types of things are clear on your website that you are merely requesting an appointment. It is not booked until you hear from me. Now here's another thing about the languaging of this, Jessica, that I wanna point out. When you say, I need to talk to you to confirm your appointment, Confirming an appointment in the language of a client means they have the appointment and you're just double checking that they're gonna be there. So I would have said, and I don't know if you did this, Jessica, but I would have said, hey, I saw you requested this appointment. It's not booked yet. I need to speak with you to get some information from you in order to complete your booking or finalize your booking. See, cause that person could just be super confused thinking they just booked an appointment with you and now you're calling to confirm it. And then Jessica, I told you to cancel it. And there's reasons why. But um, this person can be extremely confused. Okay. It's another reason why, again, I don't know if this is a new client. I don't like new clients to self-book online. Um, unless your appointment booking process online is like totally bulletproof. Okay. But they still should hear from you upon booking. Like really soon after booking. Okay. Is that making sense? Okay, Jessica says she can talk now if she wants. Jessica, I now, but I now can't pull you on. You have to be on a phone for me to pull you on the screen, and it looks like the option is no longer there. So it's okay, Jessica. If there's anything you want to chime in, you could just put it in the in the comments. So you guys, is this making sense so far? Like how many of you really do have a complete system of booking your appointments, or are you just kind of winging it? And it's okay if you're just kind of winging it. Like that's one way to do things, right? Um, but I, I like to be very thorough because it ensures that the customer has a great experience with me and communication in a massage practice is everything. It's actually more important than your, your skills, your hands-on skills. Okay. So that's the trick. All right. Now the other takeaway from this, from what Jessica's saying and why I told Jessica to cancel it is because this lady actually doesn't have a, it doesn't have an appointment. She, she doesn't have an appointment and until you actually book that appointment, and speak with the therapist, you, right? Then she doesn't have that appointment. And you never wanna be at the effect of your clients. You guys never wanna be sitting around like hoping a client shows up. So you have to take that lead and say, listen, I've gone ahead and canceled your appointment. I apologize, I haven't been able to reach you or I've canceled or I've denied your request for an appointment. I, I still may be able to get you in, but I do need to actually speak with you. So please give me a call tomorrow and we'll make this happen. Look forward to meeting you, you know, so, so that you're, you're, you hold the cards on that one. You're not, you don't want your clients to be in control of your time and your money and your schedule. And a lot of people do that. A lot of people just give your gave you guys, if you don't have policies in place, I want you to consider you're giving away like 30, you could be giving away 30% of your income every year or more or more. That's a lot of money. Just think if you, let's say you make a hundred thousand dollars a year as a massage therapist, that's 30 grand a year that you're losing because you're sloppy with your policies, ignorant of your policies, chicken about your policies. <laughs> I'm using some harsh words here, you guys, but you know what I'm saying. I'm saying it with love, right? You're just avoidant of it. Now, massage therapists, historically speaking, are pretty unstructured people. Always exceptions to that, but generally speaking, massage therapists are pretty unstructured. We kind of like to like, you know, go with the flow and like feel into things. And we don't want to, we don't want to be like some hard nosed business person. And I'm not saying you have to be that but you do have to have some structure around your business. That's like, that's like having a beautiful sports car in the driveway that doesn't have wheels. It's not gonna go anywhere. It doesn't matter how lovely it is inside and to sit in it, it doesn't drive. And you want your business to be a vehicle that will get you the things in life that you want to get. Okay, like 
like Nikki's six week tour of Asia. And you know, the things that you wanna do, your business needs to be working in order for you to have the things that you will be able to have once you have gotten that off the ground and gotten it running. Is this making sense, you guys? Is this helpful? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Tell me what you're, tell me what are you learning? What are you, what are you gonna change now? What are you confused about? Okay, um, but just such a, such an important thing to always hold the chips, guys. Be in control of those interactions with your clients and, you know, over communicate. Over communicate your, your policies and things like that, especially when it's time sensitive. Okay? All right, hold on. I got a drink. My voice is not in awesome shape today. But doing much better. All right, here we go. So let's see here. Hi, Mika. Mika, she says, this is my fourth time watching from Arkansas. Been a massage therapist for 10 years. Congratulations. And in practice again, the last four and a half. Oh, that's awesome, Mika. So glad to have you here. And thank you for introducing yourself so thoroughly. Hi, Leilani, MT in D Denver. Did a pop-up shop at a local coffee shop. Just want to know more about getting a successful practice. Good. Very good. Okay, well guys, whatever questions you have, anything, please, like don't be shy, don't wait for somebody else. Anything you want, I've got a brain full of wisdom and knowledge and experience in this industry. I've been a massage therapist more than half my life. 17 years old when I went to massage school. I just turned 42 three weeks ago, okay? Like, please use me up, whatever questions you have. I love this, I love to help. Anything that you're wondering about, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Everybody in this group is, in this same mode of what does it take to build a successful massage practice, no matter what you're doing, okay? So ask away, put your comments and questions below. Jessica, so great to have you and thank you again for your question. Um, Carrie says, even though I'm a graduate of your academy, I love these videos because it's so uplifting and positive and a good reminder of things that happen or could happen and how to handle them. Love you and your inspiration. Oh, Carrie, I love you too. You're just, you are one of my VIPs you know, we've spent so much time together and I'm so, Carrie, actually, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love it. Um, it just to share, because you said this is great, a good reminder of things that can happen or could happen. Give the rest of the viewers a little snapshot of where you were before the program and where things are now, you know, and let's, uh, let's celebrate your successes over the last, gosh, when did we work together? seems about 18 months ago. Was it longer? I don't know. So feel free, Carrie, to just share because I think it's, look, you guys, so many massage therapists just think that they just have to struggle. And you know what? A lot of therapists will struggle indefinitely. They'll never figure it out because A, they think that their magical hands and their awesome skills are what are going to get them clients. And that's the biggest lie of all. Or they think that just time builds a massage practice. Time is a factor. But if you're doing things wrong, time will destroy a massage practice, okay? Or they aren't thinking about this as a business. They don't realize that you've got to have sales and marketing skills. And that's one of the best things I love to do is actually turn sales and marketing into something fun. Most of us want to vomit when we hear sales. Like we just, you know, it's not something that we, you know, no massage therapist got into massage therapy because they wanted to do sales, right? but you have to be masterful with those client conversations before, you know, like getting clients, working with clients and retaining clients. Just consider it's all about having an empowering relationship with sales and marketing and knowing how to talk about yourself. The other thing, if there's, let's say would A, B, C, D, would be that, that therapists think that if they lower their rates or if they go get lots more skills, that that's what's gonna get them clients. It's not. Your clients don't give a shit about your modalities. They don't care. They don't care about all your skills. That's not how to market. You know, a plumber doesn't advertise on the side of his van that he has pipe wrenches of all sizes. No one cares. They just want to know that the plumber can fix the le leaky faucet or whatever, right? Okay, so last one of my favorite things is myth busting with massage therapists because guys, I've made all the mistakes. I literally have. I've made all the mistakes that you could make in building a practice and struggled for so long and even quit. And then I came back and I built a thriving practice like overnight 
because I figured out some of those key shifts. By the way, if you haven't seen my webinar, let me know. It's called Five Shifts for Creating a Successful Massage Practice. I will drop the link here in, uh, in the comments for you guys if you want that. Uh, it's a free training. It's 60 minutes long and it's life-changing. It's really awesome. Um, it'll just give you lots of great um, information and things to think about. I'll tell you the most common thing, the most common thing I hear from people that watch that uh, webinar is, I'm doing everything you're telling me not to do, Rebecca, help. <laughs> and it's good to know, right? Because you definitely, building a business is not only about doing the right things, it's about not doing the things that you should be not doing. Okay, it's about stopping the things that aren't working so that you're not wasting your time and wasting your resources. Okay, all right. Hey, Mark, what's up, guys? Ontario's in the house. All right, let's see. Um, yes, okay, so Jessica, uh, after that little commentary about your situation, yeah, reword your verbiage. Because remember, clients think confirm means they have an appointment. She doesn't even have an appointment, okay? Happy says, how we adhere to our policies will essentially train our clients to respect our time. Yes, guys, that's your job. I say this all the time. Your job is to train your clients how to do business with you. Because your business has to work for you. And lots of people have no, most massage therapists have very little to no structure around their businesses. A lot of service providers don't, don't if somebody no shows or, or cancels last minute, People just go, oh, and they just let it go. And that's ridiculous to me. That's like literally, that's like getting stood up on a date. Would you go out with that person again if they stood you up? Why would you take a client that's not gonna respect your time? But people tolerate it all the time, and if you tolerate it, it trains your clients that what they did was okay. You're always training your clients. Everything you do is training your clients by what you do and what you don't do. Okay, so totally. Hey, Elisa, great to see you. All right, Grace Henderson, welcome to live Q&A. So she says, can you please explain a bit more about this initial contact with the client if they do book online? What that phone call might look like and why it's important to do this as opposed to just letting them show up. Okay, so here's why, Grace, because this is an intimate profession that requires a high level of trust and connection. And also, we have some safety issues, right? Do we not have some safety issues in this industry? And aren't our clients potentially have a little bit of trepidation approaching us for the first time? So this is, a, building a practice is about building relationships. And if you have some system where people just go in and grab an appointment and you're not booking credit cards, you're not doing intake forms, you have no connection with that person, you're starting off on a really weak foundation for a long-term relationship. All right, now, always, sure, some people might say, well, it's worked for me. Great, then keep doing whatever you're doing. But around me and the way that I work and how I coach massage therapists to do this is that you, you, you have to have initial contact with people that book online. They may not realize they booked an appointment. They may, like, you know, like, give them a good, give them the VIP treatment. Don't let a robot build a relationship for you. Online booking is like letting a robot build your relationship for you. Don't, it doesn't replace that. It does the systematic thing of, of letting people book from the convenience of their phones or what have you. But it's a relationship that you're building, not just getting a client, okay? So does that make sense, Grace? And you would just have to think of, you know, what would that conversation entail? This is all, I teach this inside of a system. So I can't, I can't give that to you right now, but, but it's part of a process of laying a proper foundation of integrity to build that relationship with that client and give it every opportunity to um, to have you know to be a long-term relationship with a really awesome client that's perfect for you okay in this digital world you know people can just go reserve things and then just like not show up and I don't want to expose myself to that kind of vulnerability or liability as a massage therapist because people are messing with my time Okay, does that make sense, Grace? Let me know and we can circle back to you. So, Mika says, so I've considered taking your course. I roughly make 3,500 a month. I work Tuesday through Friday, every other Monday. I only work two days every other week and by late I'm done at 5.30 or six. I obviously wanna make more, who doesn't? But, but is it possible since I'm already working as much as I'm willing to work? Is what possible? What's the question, Mika? Hold on, maybe I missed something. To make more money, absolutely. If your question is, is it possible to make more money? Yes. Look, raise your rates. Like there's, there's lots of ways that you can 
make more money without working more. Some of you are giving away money because you don't have cancellation policies. Some of you are giving away money because you don't enforce your cancellation policies. Some of you are giving away money because you're undercutting yourself. Some of you are giving away money because you're charging what you think you should charge instead of what you need to charge. See what I'm saying? There's all kinds of er sins of omission, right? Errors of omission, things that you may not be doing efficiently, or you may be exposing yourself to, you have this hole in your massage practice bucket, so to speak, okay? Most people with like, within a few weeks of working with me start making more money because they're thinking differently about their business and then they're, and that changes everything like this domino effect, okay? So Mika, get, um, get yourself on my schedule, honey. Let me send you guys the link here real quick because I do get a lot of questions about what is it to work with me and, and how that goes. So there's some prerequisites. So I'm gonna send you guys this link here real quick in the comments. There are prerequisites. Please do not apply for a call if you don't meet the prerequisites, please. Okay, there's so many of you that need help. I have a lot of people that just, you know, kind of want to get my help for free and that's fine, but they're not in a position to actually work with me or they're not in a position to do something about it. So use these live Q&A calls to get as much of my help for free as you want to. But for those of you that are serious about looking at what it takes to work with me, um, that's then, then make sure you read the prerequisites and if it resonates with you, go ahead and schedule a call with me and get your application in and we can talk and really look and see. Look, and I promise you guys, I will not invite you into the program if it's not a good fit for you. I would never want to sell you something that you don't need. I wouldn't take a dime from you if I wasn't confident I could help you. So just know that, all right? Just know that, okay? I know, I know which therapists will succeed and which ones won't because of their state of mind and a couple of other factors. So I'm very, very good at uh, troubleshooting and, and just figuring those things out. So um, love to look with you and help you, okay? So sorry, let me pause here and I'm gonna, not pause, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pay attention here and build and drop the link in. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Multitasking is a lie. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna say application for eight week mentoring program details here. I'll put the link in there for you, okay, you guys? So you can go take a look at that. Um, you know, I just, I like, I think about, like I told you, this student I have in Canada, this graduate 18 months ago, just opened her practice, made 1600 bucks. This month she made 9,600 and that was not prepaid sessions. That was all hands on hours. You see what I'm saying? It's pretty awesome. You don't know what you don't know. If you, if you don't know what is the source of your problem, you can't fix it. For most massage therapists, the struggle, they're struggling because of a blind spot that they can't see. It's not like, oh, you just didn't hand out your cards enough. It's not ever just a simple solution. I've had therapists that are making 80 grand a year and they wanna make 120. They're already successful by other measures, but they can't get over the hump, you know? And the goal there is to successfully pinpoint what is the thing that's holding you down. It's like you're running around in circles and you're like, why am I running in circles? Why am I running in circles? And then a coach comes in and goes, oh, guess what? Your foot is nailed to the floorboards. That's why you're running in circles. You know, right? You can't, you didn't ever notice it because you're in your life. But a good coach and mentor is gonna look at you objectively and your scenario and be able to see exactly what you need. All right, so yes, Mika, you can do it. All right, Renee, I work between four different places. What strategies can I use to get everyone to come to one place if I can find one? Holy shit, you're working, sorry. You're working four different places, that's a lot, why? Are you, is it your own practice? Like you're, or are you like contracting and then like a spa? Renee, tell me more, I'm fascinated by this, okay? Cause like that's a lot, you gotta focus your energy and here's the thing I want you to realize is you cannot, you, you cannot be great at four things, like you can't, that's your energy going in four different directions and don't, don't expect that your clients are gonna follow you to a new location. Because if you're working for somebody else or you're, so Renee, tell me what the scenarios are, these four different scenarios are. Um, but you're saying, what strategies can I use to get everyone to come to one place if I can find one? This is, you should probably apply 
for mentoring as well because this is not, you guys see like, it's not that simple, Renee. It's not like, oh, hey, everyone, I'm at this new place. Everybody come find me. How many of you have had that scenario before where you were working somewhere and then you moved to your own spot and you thought everyone would just follow you and they didn't? I hear that one on the daily. And, and that's why, do you know why? It's because your clients aren't coming to you because you're a good massage therapist. They're not coming to you for your skills. They're coming to you for lots of different things that all converge. So if you don't keep all of those things together, you can't take one piece and if you take one piece out and you change it, you lose the whole thing. Does that make sense, Renee? So you could actually totally lose those clients um, unless you have really great, you, so what you need to have, and here's like the broadest answer I can give you, Renee, is you need to have really on point uh, communication strategies and um, yeah, that's, that's unfortunately, my dear, that's gonna, that's not a question I can answer here quickly, but hopefully that'll give you a, a different way of thinking about it and um, and then I'll just let me look at let me look at I know there's some comments below that you said um, so let me circle back to you Renee okay I'm gonna sc keep scrolling down and see what else here yeah yeah okay let's see okay Carrie says so I opened my private practice January 2nd 2017 went through Becca's Academy March and April started out with approximately 10 clients a week I'm currently booked three weeks out with 23 to 25 clients a week baller that's awesome okay and then she says i have a massage therapist who rents from me now congratulations that's amazing and i just raised my rates between 10 to 18 dollars and didn't lose a single client boom rebecca's mindset work is phenomenal consistency and communication is key oh carrie you guys isn't that great so look what it's been a year ish something like that well let's see 2017 so yeah, it's been more than more than a year. Okay, good. Almost two years. Um, and and that you're booked three weeks out. And you've got help paying your rent by renting to another therapist. You've got 23 to 25 clients a week and raise your rates 10 to $18 and didn't lose a single client. See, that's because Carrie is looking at this holistically as a whole system. A lot of therapists just freak out at the idea of raising their rates and they they stop or they just don't know how to grow their practice. So congratulations, it's so awesome. So awesome, right? Elisa, you'll second that. Share, you guys. Share, share, share. If you have any other um, success stories that you wanna share, I love the before and after. And I think it's really inspiring for people that are watching this to know like that that is possible. If you were to tell me when I first started out as a massage therapist that I could make 10 grand a month, I would have died. I would have been like, doesn't compute. I would have been stoked to make $2,000 a month. Now, granted, that was 20 years ago, 24 years ago, and I was a child. <laughs> I was 18, right? But still, you know what I mean? Like, I, I that's the beauty of this kind of conversation and this kind of community, this, like, crowdsourcing of ideas and inspiration that helps people to realize, wow, I am not even thinking about this in the same way that other people are. So it's really great, okay? Okay, good. Okay, good. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Hi, Sarah. Sarah says, hi, I listened to your massage world training. Oh, I'm so glad. And it really inspired me. I'm getting back into massage work after seven years of working in accounting. Cool. Looking forward to checking out your program. Awesome. I hope you do, Sarah. I just love my people. I love my students. You guys are the best. Hey, Ty. Good to see you. Yes, Vince. Blind spot big time. We solved some big problems in Vince's well-established practice, and now he's you know, onto much greener pastures with your, with your work. It's so exciting. Okay. Oh, Micah. Sorry, Micah. <sighs> Thanks for correcting me. Okay. It's Micah, not Mika. All right. So, okay. Renee, we're going back to Renee's question. Remember she's working four places one day a week at a salon, two days at a corporate account, one day at home and a day for a hospital. So Renee, are these all your endeavors or are you employed? That's what I want to know. You said, oh, she said that, sorry. All but the hospital are my own. So Renee, I'm gonna take a gand, I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna take a guess and you tell me if I'm right or wrong. I think you're lacking an overall business strategy. You sound like, and again, I could be wrong. I don't, just take this at face value. Tell me if, I, if I'm wrong. But I wanna invite you to consider why you're doing that is because you don't have a strategy and maybe a little bit of scarcity mentality. 
it doesn't seem like you really know what you want from your practice other than to just kind of like be busy. And so we just keep chasing these bright, shiny objects and going, I think I'll do this, I think I'll do that. And we're running around ragged trying to get enough appointments, but it's really, really exhausting. Okay, so there's a lot of power that you get from really honing in on your niche and what you want from your practice. You know, one of my current students right now, she's not even interested in like getting more clients. That's not why she's working with me. A lot of people come to me because they're like, I need to make money, help, or the ship is sinking, SOS, or, or just I want to get over that hump, or I don't know where to start, like so many places. But she is, 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 has invested in just spending the time to figure out really like what she's doing with her practice. Like what does she do? What does she want to offer to the world? Okay, so it's not just getting clients, you guys. It's far more than just getting clients and making money. It's about fulfilling your calling. It's about being in alignment with your purpose. And it's about pulling out your biggest gifts and presenting them to the world. Success for me is three things all at the same time. Doing what you love, making a difference, and making a living. And if you're missing any of those three things, you're not going to be fulfilled. You're not going to be satisfied. Okay, so... So Renee, let me know, are we on, am I on in that assertion or not? And then we'll circle back to you again, all right? So <clears throat> Carrie says, if you're on the, <laughs> thank you, Carrie. <laughs> if you're on the fence about doing Rebecca's Academy, listen, I made 47K my first year in private practice and last year I made 60K, just do it. I mean, hello, that's a nice return on your investment. I should, I should increase the tuition, you know, <laughs> should triple it <laughs> right so that's so worth it Carrie way to go you know way to go and you know I also handpicked you because I knew you had what it took the things I can't train into you you had the drive the commitment the success the need you had the resources all of all of those things available to you you just needed a guide you needed somebody to walk you through the fire swamp who knows where the where the blasts are and all the perils that lay in this course and terrain of, of building a practice. So way to kick ass mama. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, Christine says, are you talking gross earnings per month or net? Christine, what, which, which question were you directed at? I think those are that usually we talk in gross cause net there's so many variables. Okay. But usually we talk in gross in gross earnings. Okay. So if you're asking Carrie, I'm guessing 45K was her gross, 60K was her gross, you know, those types of things. Okay. Yeah, Sarah, totally so excited. Delvon, what's up? Okay, so then Renee says, I love your questions, Renee. Thank you for just putting yourself out there and just letting me hash this out with you because I really want to support you guys, all right? So, uh, yeah, around here in the live Q&A, open mouths get fed. All right, I can't help you if you're not asking questions. So I love it, Renee. Love your honesty and transparency. So, so Renee says, I'm used to working in luxury spas where all my appointments are booked and I'm now living in a depressed area. Yes, scarcity mentality. See, Renee, here's the thing. We got to fix that first. If we don't fix that view you will unconsciously be self-sabotaging yourself. All of your actions, you guys, are completely correlated to your beliefs. So, of course, you would be running around to four different places because in your belief, there's just not enough. Okay? Or, or if you're used to working in a luxury spa when all of your appointments are booked for you, well, guess what? Private practice, you don't get that. And also, you guys, some of you, some people, when I do these discovery calls... Um, I tell them, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think you should be in private practice. Can you believe I would have the guts to say that to somebody? And some people go, you know what? You're right. It's like the, it's like the relief that they needed. I've told, I remember this one couple I talked to and they had this, um, this spa, you know, this kind of hair and nails and skincare. And then she was the massage therapist and like running this, this operation had some good seasonal business, but was just really struggling uh, to make ends meet and wasn't able to really pay herself a salary, wasn't able to hire a receptionist, just, just a, lot, a lot of stuff to unravel. And we really looked at it and I said, I, I think you should close. It doesn't make sense. You know, you're not gonna get, a, like in the situation you're in, you're so far deep into that hole, I don't see how you can get out. See, sometimes we get, people are past the point of no return. 
And I am the first person to say I have undying hope and belief in people, but I also have a huge dose of reality, which is, you know, don't don't blow sunshine up somebody's skirt. Tell them the honest truth based on a very educated assessment. See, so some of you guys might be struggling because some unknown thing that's like one of those factors where you'll just until you shift the way you're looking at it and the way you approach it, you could actually run yourself ragged or run yourself out of business. And I definitely don't want that for you. So worth looking at. Thank you, Renee. Thank you for your honesty and for just being coachable and being like, yeah, totally scarcity mentality, right? One of my superpowers is helping he people heal their money issues. Uh, how many of you have money issues? Or you struggle with money? Or you, you know, how you know you have money issues is that you're not making enough money as you'd like to, okay? Um, in some way, there's pain, there's struggle, there's, you know, stress for you. And a lot of massage therapists have this idea that, um, you know, they need to help people more than they need to make a living, and that's BS. You can do both. You can have it all, okay? All right, so let's see. Micah says, I don't really desire more clients either. I currently have to turn clients away that aren't willing to come when I have time available. I don't let them talk to me into working outside my business hours. Good, good. So Micah, you know, yeah, let's look. I, I won't know until we dig in, and I'm going to ask you a ton of questions, okay? So when we do these discovery calls like we've been talking about, it's, um, it's, it's all about you. I'm not there like pitching all the features and benefits of my program. We're talking all about you and what's going on with you and what your problems are and what we have to identify what those obstacles are so that we can fix them. And I'll tell you exactly what they are. I have a whole, I take, look, this is my last, this is my last notes on a, on a call with one of my students. Here, let me cover the information so you can't see. Look, I take crazy notes. And this is all about you and we fully diagnose the problem. And that's what you need. You don't need Band-Aid solutions. You need a thorough diagnosis so that we can do targeted therapy on your business and really give you what you need. Okay, so Vince says, oh, I love this, you guys. I'm feeling the love. Vince says, you helped me become a student again in all aspects of my practice. After 19 years, I thought I knew everything, but I had tunnel vision that was putting blocks in my practice. Amen. Thanks for being coachable, Vince. Super proud of you. Crystal says, that's where I am trying to reassess what I'm doing between that and being pregnant. How do you success? How do you suggest I not hurt my practice and name until I'm back into full focus? Well, Crystal, look, you just got to be straight with your clients. If you're, you know, if you're pulling back or you're taking time off because you're pregnant or you're going slower because you're pregnant, you just got to be in communication about it. The worst thing to do is just pull the plug entirely or flake out on your clients. Don't do that. That's what will destroy your reputation. If you're showing up and you're showing up strong, and you're not, you're not appearing as some flaky, undependable person and not behaving like when you should be fine, okay? But Crystal, look, people are constantly reassessing what they're doing, and that's okay. Your clients don't need to know that, all right? You need to be able to do all this strategically, you guys. There are, look, there are, I wanna tell you right now, think about the problem that you're having right now. So in Crystal's case, that question like, how do I, I I'm afraid, basically what you're saying, Crystal, is, I don't really know what I'm doing in terms of what I want my business to do. I'm reassessing everything. And I'm in this kind of transition phase, not only being pregnant, but just with my relationship with my business. How do I navigate that? I promise you, there are solutions for all of those things. 100%. Solutions for all that they can be solved. And I want you guys to start thinking about what would it be like if they were solved? What would it be like if you just knew? You'd probably get better sleep and you'd probably make more money. <laughs> okay, right? Okay, good. Hi, Rosemary. Hi, Stacy. Okay, Rosemary says, I'm planning to increase my rates, planning to give my clients one month notice. Should I email them or tell them in person or both? Do it all, Rosemary. Do it all. But also, Rosemary, you got to work through the fear. If you are weird about raising your rates, your clients will be weird about it. They will. They'll be like, Ugh. you know, like if you're, if you're not totally solid in that decision, don't do it yet. So I don't know why, you, what specifically you're scared about other than just like doing something new, in which case you just have to do it, right? And, um, but yeah, you can give your clients one month notice. Also, you guys, I don't recommend ever raising your rates more than $20, okay? Don't do that. Uh, $10, no brainer, easy, not a problem at all, okay? But don't raise your, don't jack up, like don't double your rates, don't, you don't do things like that, that you'll definitely lose clients. Okay, but Rosemary, what are you scared of? Tell me, what are you scared of? 
Okay. And we can work through that. All right. All right. So Carrie says, I live in Flint, Michigan, a depressed area that is having a toxic water crisis. It's still doable. Thank you. Because guess what, you guys? Your success comes from within. It, your success has nothing to do with the people around you, the economy, the mindset of the people around you, the market, the whatever the other massage therapists around you are doing. It has nothing to do with those things. It's all you. Your business will succeed or fail based on you and your clarity and your mindset and your orientation towards growth and your commitment to succeed no matter what. I'll tell you right now. Remember I told you earlier one of the things, what reasons, some of the reasons massage therapists fail or, or I, um, when I tell people like don't do this, don't be in private practice, it's because they're not committed to it. They're not totally all in. Look, you've got to be all in. No other option than to succeed. You know what I mean? You can't be kind of pregnant or sort of married. You either are or you aren't. So it's a good self-assessment question to look at. If you're like struggling, I want to know on a scale of one to 10, how committed are you to having what you want out of your practice and having that vision that you have be real? If the answer is not an immediate 10, you need a backup and you need to really reassess if being self-employed is for you. Because you'll, you know, think about it. Think about if you're sort of not committed to your marriage. Your, your marriage is over, <laughs> okay, right? There's something threatening it at all times. Same thing with your practice. 1% doubt equals 100% self-sabotage, okay? It's really tricky stuff to wrap your head around, all right? So let's see here. Uh, Vince, Wonder Woman, I just love you. All right, so Micah says, I have money struggles because I'm terrible at saving my money throughout the week. Micah, you're terrible at saving your money throughout the week because you have money struggles. It's actually the other way around. Okay, you have, you have, you have a, you have a um, damaged relationship with money. You've got a belief in there about money. Okay, guys, all money issues are mindset issues. The end, that's it, right? Okay. Oh, okay, I don't know how to say your name. Juraluk Morris, coach me. How do we say your name? Juraluk, I don't want to even try, I'm gonna slaughter it. So help me pronounce your name, but welcome. Great to see you. <laughs> okay. Leilani says, getting clients to rebook, finding new, but the right clients to work with. I don't know where to get new clients. Okay. When you don't know where to get new clients, my next question is going to be, what's your niche? A niche, as I define it, is a problem you solve or a population you serve that it's obvious, by the way, for my graduates and students, this is some new things that are coming. The pop, if it's a, it's either a problem you solve or a population you serve, and it has to be obvious that that population needs massage. Okay, it has to be obvious. So, like, in the sense of like, my niche was pregnant women. Pregnant women are always in pain and miserable and uncomfortable. It's like obvious pregnant women benefit from massages. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a little less obvious if your niche is children with autism. It's like, how is massage going to help them? Do you see what I'm saying? And that is a good niche, but it requires some. Connecting the dots for people. Okay. So Leilani, getting clients to rebook tells me you're weak with sales and you're weak with, um, you're weak with, uh, your, your confidence about the work that you do and that you probably don't have a structure. Okay. You're just kind of like, if they rebook, they'll rebook. <laughs> okay. Or you're like, Oh, I don't want to pressure them or, uh, or you're just not tight with your processes. Okay. Um, and then not having the right not having new clients to work with, you have, a, you have a client acquisition issue, okay? If you don't know where to get new clients, you're probably not clear about what clients you want. And guys, if the answer is any and all clients, new. No. If the answer is people with pain, no. If the answer is people with money who want massages, no. That's not it, okay? This is, the, this is like the most important thing you can get when it comes to marketing a practice. It has to be obvious who you are, what you do, and who you serve, what problem you solve, and obvious that massage is the answer to that. Otherwise, you're going to run around trying to educate people, and you don't get paid to educate people. You get paid to work on people. All right? See what I'm saying? Okay? All right, so Leilani, let me know. Do you have a niche? Tell me what it is. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so... I want to accept a health insurance health insurance from clients. Where should I start? So, 
So that's a big question. I don't think I have time to answer that, but I will tell you, um, let's see, I have a, did we do this training in the, I don't know if we did this. Okay, so what I would recommend is there are people out there that train massage therapists how to bill insurance. Google it. There's courses you can take that'll walk you through it. Okay, so how to bill insurance massage therapists for, you know, like just Google something like that. And I'm sure you'll find there's somebody that probably is teach. In fact, I know there are. I just don't know them at the top of my head. I know there are people that are teaching that to massage therapists. Okay. So, Michelle says, Rebecca, this is a group of nice ladies at Lane Ryan. Stop in and say hi. <laughs> hi. Are you, guys in, are you guys in the, are you in Utah, Michelle? Is that why you're telling me to stop in and say hi? <laughs> and are you all massage therapists? <laughs> Lane Brain is a clothing store, so uh, Jessica says, amen to that. I had fear, worked through it, no problem now. Yeah, you guys, look, you should make your number one job liberating yourself from your fears. Why would you tolerate being afraid? Like, how long have people been afraid of succeeding? How long have you been afraid of failing? How long have you been weird about money, you know, making money, all that stuff? For me, it's like my full-time job to slay dragons, myself and others. It's like the second I realize, oh, there's a limitation. It's like, oh yeah, you know, like we have to, I just, you got to develop a thirst for that growth and you've got to acquire the skills and training and mindset and mentality to not tolerate that bullshit from yourself. Like you have to get interested in flying because you know what I mean? Like, you, why? Why? The second you realize you've nailed your foot to the ground, would you just go, oh, well, I guess that's just where I'm going to stay because, you know, my mother was that way and everybody in my family is just, you know, didn't really succeed. And so, why? like, the second you see that limitation or that barrier, it is your duty to your soul and your spirit and to your creator to liberate yourself from that and I could go on and on and on about all of the tools that you can use to free yourself. Here, I'll give you a few. EFT, tapping, how many of you know about EFT? Okay, working with the law of attraction, deliberate creation, manifesting, Mel Robbins, five second rule, um, the work of Byron Katie, landmark education. Uh, there's, you, there's a million things out there for self-development and if that isn't something that you at least eat for breakfast, then you're late to the party. Okay, get on that and get on that and get, get, give yourself the gift of liberating yourself from your fears. The second you see them, eradicate them. Constantly invent, reinventing yourself from the inside out is just, in my mind, it's the best game in town. It's the best game in town. And I love, love when I see my students come in with all this stuff. Can I give you an example? Look, look, this person... This person has some language issues. Has anybody ever told you you have some language issues? <laughs> huh? All right, language issues. This person can only speak in terms of what they don't want. You ask this person, what do you want? And they say, well, I don't want this, I don't want that. That tells me there's a language, uh, there's a weak relationship with the power of language. Okay, we gotta solve that problem. Because the more you focus on what you don't want, the more you get it. And if you're thinking in terms of what you don't want, then you're super screwed because all you're doing is driving the, the, the car off the cliff. Okay. Um, this person has a, uh, has a really hard time thinking of the future. This person has a fear of being seen and criticized. How many of you are afraid to put yourself out there because you're afraid of being seen and criticized? You're afraid of people going, BS, you don't know what you're doing. BS, you're not a good therapist. No, 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 no. This isn't even real. Like all that stuff. Um, imposter syndrome. I could do an entire year long program on that one. Um, a lack of clarity of what this person wants to do. Wishy washy, second guessing, indecisive, fear, trying to work on everybody, does not know how to market the skills that they have, fear of not being good enough, fear of not making enough money. These are the problems we're working on with this person right here, right? Probably sounds like a lot of you in some way, shape, or form, but this is like real stuff. We got to strip away that which is in the way of you being you and expressing yourself fully and authentically in the world. And then you can succeed as a massage therapist. So sometimes I tell my students, once they get in my program, they go, wait a minute. This is like a self-development program wrapped into a business development program because your business is a reflection of you. All right. Okay. 
Oh, Michelle says, wow, just signed on. You're speaking exactly what I need to hear. I need a discovery call with you. Okay, good. We'll get what you guys. My schedule is booking up, okay? So please get on it now. I'm also going to be gone for a week in February. I just booked tri uh, tickets to Taiwan for the Lantern Festival. It's on my best girlfriend's bucket list, and we're going to Asia. I've never been to Asia, and I'm so excited, all right? So filling up, get on the calendar. Let's do this, all right? So you said, you just said how when you do discovery calls, it's not about selling your stuff, but breaking your money blockages, and I need help. Yes, you do. Absolutely, okay? <laughs> all right, yes, Michelle, I give second chances all the time. There's plenty of people I've talked to more than one time so uh, not a problem, all right? We'll see. Unless, I don't know, I'll have to go back on my notes to you, Michelle. Unless you like really pissed me off or lied to me or, or something like that or no show to call. <laughs> Guys, if you no show a call with me, you don't get a second chance. Sorry. All right. All right. Juralic. Juralic. Thank you. Appreciate it. Rosemary says, I'm scared to lose clients, although I know I won't lose them. I do feel weird about it because I'm uncomfortable talking money. I need to get over it. Yes, you do. Rosemary, you do. You actually literally need to get over that. You will, you will be so limited if you hang on to that or if that actually hangs on to you, okay? You gotta free yourself from that fear so that you, you have power with money. You guys have gotta be power. How many of you consider yourself powerful with money? Like you have a powerful relationship with money. And I don't mean you've gotta have billions in the bank and a swanky retirement, but like you're okay with money. Money doesn't cause you pain to talk about it. And if it does cause you some kind of pain or suffering or struggle, then we definitely should talk, all right? Um, gosh, I get, all, I get all these ideas, you guys, and I want to do, like, these awesome webinars for you and these, like, trainings. It's just oh, one of the reasons I love these Sunday lives. I love what you guys bring to the party, and I hope that you get a lot out of it, okay? Um, so, yeah, Rosemary, here's the thing, you guys. You will lose clients. Get over it. There's plenty of clients. That's scarcity mentality, Okay? you will lose clients. And the ones that you lose, God bless them and good riddance, okay? If somebody's coming to you because you're the cheapest ther therapist in town, that's not a good relationship that you want. That's like what I call a practice booty call. <laughs> it's like they're only coming to you because you're just cheap and ready to go. You know what I mean? That's dumb. Like you don't want that. You guys are better than that. You want clients that are coming to you because you're you, not because you're cheap, easy, open late, Da, da 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 you want them telling you you should be charging more when you raise your rates you know what most of the time when my students are working with me and we have them raise their rates there some of their clients say thank you for raising your rates it's about time i felt a little weird that you were charging so little see there's all kinds of stuff in there oh rosemary i'm so excited to see you grow and the growth that's possible for you once you bust through that okay so okay all right Brittany, what's up Okay, and then let's see, uh, Sarah, thank you. Look, Sarah's like cheering you on, saying, Rosemary, Rebecca can help you, it's not easy. Almost, yes, almost all of us have hangups with money. Guys, I used to have such bad money issues, I didn't even charge my clients. I let them walk out without paying. I literally did, and then I would justify it. I'm like, oh, I probably didn't really do what they wanted anyway, or oh, I probably, oh, I just got so much value out of working on that person, they just really helped me so weird. All right. By the way, um, if you guys have not seen my five shifts webinar, okay, then, um, let me post the link here. It's a free training here. Hold on, hold on. But it's, um, five shifts webinar. It's a free training and you will love it. And honestly, it's, it's good to watch this before you book a call with me or like after you book a call with me, cause it's gonna, it's gonna really put you it's going to give you a lot of value and it'll make our call be a lot more efficient. Okay. So yeah, go Byron Katie. Oh, Micah says, uh, my son just asked, why do you watch this girl all the time? <laughs> I told him you're a coach for massage therapist. He said, but you're like the best in town. Why do you need a coach? Of course. And you guys look, I have no doubt. See, a lot of times when people want to tell people I'm a coach for massage therapist, I tell them I'm a business strategy coach and mindset coach. Cause you guys are probably all great skilled body workers. It's not your skills that are the problem here. You know, you've got modalities out the wazoo and you've got hands on, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're good at body work. That's not the problem. I don't coach anyone in body work skills <clears throat> unless they are doing my prenatal massage training. 
But just remember, skills are almost never the reason why your practice is struggling. And maybe you're not struggling, but maybe you're just not satisfied with what you're doing. Okay. All right. So, hey, Robin, you said you weren't going to be here. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, Louisa, you only lose the ones you don't need to have or the ones that you don't really have anyway. They're not your people. Okay. If a client leaves your practice, Carrie's saying it's making room for a new and better client who values you and what you do. 100%. Christine says, I just raised my rates and a few people have told me I'm still not charging enough. Thank you for the validation of what I just said. Totally true. All right, you guys, we're out of time. So if you have any other questions, throw them in now. We're going to pull cards. It's woo-woo time. Here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, I'm in a really good mood today. I'm, I'm just, oh my gosh, I got so just, I'm just surrounded by awesomeness in my life and I just love sharing this time with you guys. It's really, really great. Uh, Jarelic, here we go. Let me give you the link again to schedule a call with me. Okay, so here's um, here's the, oops, hold on. Here's the link for, um, and please, again, you guys, I'm gonna state this again. This is a page I'm gonna send you that's on my website. And I want you to read the whole thing <coughs> before you decide to schedule a call. <coughs> you guys, I'm so sorry. There's no way to mute this on Facebook Live, so you're just gonna hear me coughing. There it is. Okay, now this is a call for the purpose of looking with me to see if I can help you solve your problems. It's not just a chit chat. I don't do free chit chats. <laughs> okay, this is our free chit chat. I do it every week. All right, here we go, guys. We're gonna go with Archangel Michael. Do you have your? Do you have your? Um, you, everybody, bring to mind a question, situation, something that you need some insight on, and we're gonna do this. Okay, tell me in the comments when you have your thing. Say, I have mine when you're ready to go. I want you to think of something that you need some insight, guidance, clarity on, wisdom, and how this works is we're going to pull a couple of these cards, and it's going to help you unearth from your unconscious mind, you know, what, what you need to work on or what you need to allow into your life, okay? Jessica's got hers. You guys ready? Who else? Tell me when you're ready. Micah is ready to go. Leilani, Rosemary, okay. Okay, here's the card, is detach from the situation. Okay, so this says, here, I'll show you the card. Flaming sword, detach from the situation. Okay, so think about this, and I'm gonna give you a little bit more insight in here. So detach from the situation means you've become embroiled in a situation to the point where you can't see it objectively. It is, it, you need to step back and obtain a bigger picture view of the situation. Archangel Michael asks you to detach from the surrounding emotions and he'll help you to do so. Michael will also guide you in depersonalizing the experience so you don't have to take offense at others' behavior. This will prevent you from acting defensively. Instead, your actions will stem from love and wisdom. Ooh, can we make that a goal? Actions stemming from love and wisdom. Give yourself permission to take a time out away from the people involved. You don't need to know the solution right now as the angels are taking care of the details. What's important for you is to assess or access a sense of inner peace. Okay, so there you go. Don't take on other people's stuff. Detach from the situation. That's your wisdom from Archangel Michael. Do you guys like it? What did you think? What do you think? Is that resonating with you? And then let's do an animal, <clears throat> let's do animal spirit card. Okay, so just put in the comments if that resonates with you, if that's just, you know, spot on, if that helps you, okay? And now we're gonna pull, so you can think of a new thing or you can think of the same, you know, the same thing just for a deeper dive. Sarah says it resonates. Oh, I love this. This is perfect, this goes with this too. The next card here, you guys, is mouse. And mouse is all about being too tied into all of the details. So it's kind of the same thing about what we just, um, what we just got from Archangel Michael cards, okay? So mouse is all about, here we go. Mouse is, just looking at my guidebook here. Okay, here we go. Mouse is all about detail-oriented, small-minded, nitpicky, and nervous, 
All right, so mouse has an innate desire to tend to the details. It often spends its days fixing, preparing, organizing, and scrutinizing. Unfortunately, a mouse personality doesn't notice when they've gone too far. Soon they begin to have a limited and fearful vision of life and try to control every detail. This can be quite a painful experience for both the mouse and for those around them. When mouse energy is at play, step back for a moment. Are you guys getting this message? It's pretty loud and clear. Uh, it may be time to find a more purposeful pr project to delve into, one that's worthy of your exacting eye. So having that detail eye is not a problem. It just could be in this situation and you may need to give the details to something else, okay? Maybe something else is worthy of details like your, your diet or your exercise or something like that. But whatever this particular problem is that you have in mind, this is just saying that you're, you're just being busy with no real purpose, okay? And you step back and look at that bigger picture and just get a lot more organized and resourceful and prepared. All right, let's do one more. I wanna do the goddess guidance cards because wouldn't it be cool if it was a similar message, then you guys know. Then you know to pay attention. Okay, here we go. Goddess guidance oracle cards. You guys share with me in the comments, do you like this? Is this helping? What are you seeing? Okay. Here we go. Okay, so Quan Yin is the goddess that we pulled here, and this is a goddess of compassion. Okay, beautiful card. And this is about releasing judgment on yourself and others, which, by the way, is a great way to detach from a situation. Okay, so it's about releasing judgments about yourself and others, focusing on the love and light that is within everyone. Um, gentleness is true strength. And it comes from feeding yourself with nourishing words, thoughts, deeds, intentions, and nourishing foods. Shield yourself from harshness by placing an intention to attract only kind and gentle life lessons and relationships. Sometimes that's like my prayer when things are getting hard or I'm stuck. I'm like, you know, let me learn this lesson in the most kind, gentle, easy way possible. <laughs> okay. Um, transform harshness into gentleness by refusing to see anything but the shining light that's within each person and situation. This intention begins with your relationship with yourself. Be very gentle with yourself in all ways. Be happy, be kind, be sweet, but most of all, be true to you. So this card is also about releasing any shame or any guilt to, to heaven, to whatever your source is. Um, trans, you know, transmuting that fear into power or that, that um, harshness into kindness and gentleness and compassion. Uh, it's about staying positive, avoiding gossip. Gossip is complaining just for the sake of being right, just to complain instead of solving a problem. Um, and, you know, just not being so hard on yourself and releasing those perfectionistic mouse kinds of tendencies. Okay? I see a theme here. Do you guys see it? Isn't that great? Yeah, good stuff. Okay, awesome, you guys. So, 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 so. That's it for today. Was that fun? Leave your comments below if you have any other questions or anything else you need. Um, holla at me and then we'll plan on seeing you guys um, next Sunday. Love it. Love spending time with you. So have a great week and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.